everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today it's time to continue the exploring color series. We're going to talk about the color white, or I guess sort of a non-color. You'll see what I mean. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vincey V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vincey V style. All right, so we're going to talk all about painting the color white. Now, uh, this is a very challenging color to paint for a lot of reasons. But let's start, of course, with some history and kind of understand what the heck this even is. So, first off, this is one of the oldest colors in art, dating back some 18 to 20,000 years. Um, it shows up in prehistoric cave paintings and beyond. Uh, this thing is used all over the place. It's sort of associated emotionally. Most humans uh, tend to associate it with sort of purity, cleanliness, honesty, neutrality. You have sayings like, you know, raising the white flag and stuff like that. So all of those things are, are part of what the color white kind of emotionally represents. But in general, it has this sort of take of cleanliness or purity about it. Uh, it's often part of religious practices, so it shows up in uh, a lot of religious outfits, uh, sometimes even things like wedding dresses. Um, so that's a big part of it. And it just generally gets used a lot for a lot of formal purposes. Part of the challenge of white in the real world is, of course, keeping it clean. So when you have something that actually looks quite crisp and white, it feels just naturally pretty, um, you know, pretty clean and, and above everything around it in some way. That's why it's become favored in a lot of modern architecture and interior design, because it just has this very naturally clean look. Although if you have one of those really, uh, you know, nice kitchens, it's just really hard to keep it clean. So there's a downside. Um, now, interestingly with white, and related to what we're going to talk about later on in this video, uh, many languages, especially like Inuit, but also Sanskrit and other languages, have lots of words for the color white. Uh, so English <clears throat> is fairly limited, but you know there are sort of proxy words, but um, lots of languages go into great detail, not only breaking down the different sort of uh, purities of white, is it warm, is it cold, uh, is it dull, is it shiny, all those different things can have slightly different words and nuanced language to refer to them because it turns out, as we'll see when we get to the paint, White is a pretty big spectrum of colors, and to really use it in our miniature art, we need to expand our horizons over uh, what we consider white paint. It'll make our lives easier and our painting better. Um, now, in paints, white tends to be one of the more difficult colors to paint. It is often made from titanium dioxide, uh, but the pigments for white are larger, they are chunkier, they are harder to grind, and as a result of those bigger, heavier, chunkier pigments, the paint will often be more chalky, uh, you know, harder to actually uh, blend with, to paint on, to get a consistent smooth layer, all of those things. So it's a very problematic paint um, to utilize. And so that's going to also lead to some tips we talk about as we get into the actual painting process. The important thing to understand about white is, and there are some differences here if we're talking about something digital versus our paints and so on, you know, versus like snow or a cloud or a, 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 a white sand beach, but effectively white is achromatic. Um, what that means is just it has no hue. And so it's scattering all components, all wavelengths of light equally and sort of in a rough direction. And so what that means is that you don't get any real color out of it. However, imperfections in the surfaces, uh, when they are uh, slightly less, uh, what do I want to say, when they're slightly not as perfect, that's when you start to get tones where they appear a little more green, a little more red, whatever it happens to be, uh, warm, cold, so on. It's also important to understand that, and you know, you know this if you've ever tried to wear a white outfit, or as I said, have the aforementioned white kitchen. Um, white stains and colors really easily. It's easily polluted by environmental colors, right? So uh, in many ways, true pure white is going to be something fairly rare in the environment. All right, 
enough theory, let's talk about actually painting this color. Here's my first piece of advice to make painting white easier. Don't. Just don't. Don't paint pure dead white. Just don't. There's almost no reason to use it. Basically, the only time you should be using pure dead white is when you're talking about like the glint of light off of non-metallic metal, the glint of light in an eye, the glint of light on a gem. Are you seeing a pattern here? It's whenever you're trying to represent the glint, the reflection, uh, the specular reflection of some pure white light dot, like something that is hitting the full spectrum back at the eye of the viewer through some tiny glint, that can be pure white because it is, in fact, in reality, uh, a pretty close to pure white light. So in that regard, that's when you should be using pure white. In basically any other case, you should not. You sh shouldn't. You don't need it. You can use other near whites and be much more successful. Now, um, most things aren't actually white. That What I mean by that is like you perceive maybe a lot of things around you as being white, but they're, they're really not. So I'm going to prove that to you right now. Um, this is a picture of my wall. Now, my walls are just white walls. But what color is this wall you're looking at right now? What, what color is that? Would you say that's pure white? Well, you know, and then as you can see, the picture's sort of expanding. How about now, right? The point being is that almost none of this wall looks pure dead white, whatever that color is in your paint bottle, because it's polluted by the strong shadows that make it look more gray or blue, by the yellow light uh, from my lamp that um, really reflects and is a very warm, uh, low K light shooting up at the, at, the, uh, at the wall. All of these things create this environmental light pollution and so most things in the world just won't look pure white. It, it reflects, absorbs, and, and uh, shows a lot of the hues and environmental colors around it, which make it feel not pure dead white. Now, let's take a look at some paints that we could use as white. So all of the paints you see here on my desk in our composition could be our white. Uh, so that's everything from this very uh, sort of gray dark bone color all the way up to this pure dead white. And we can uh, separate these two uh, into temperature colors. What I mean by that is the white could be seen as warm, so that's when it's more yellow or brown influenced, or it can be seen as cold, so that's when it's more blue or uh, gray influenced generally. Um, dead white, uh, if, you're, if you ever use that color, does fall into the cold side of the spectrum. But in fact, these are all just sort of in the gray area, but we don't have to stop there. These uh, other paints, all of these things, are also whites for the purposes of our composition. And that's going to be hard for you to sort of look at, because you look at this bottle, and I think this is something people don't really get, they look at the bottles here of these pastels and all these colors, and you think, no, that's a color, Vince. That's blue or purple or pink or green or something like that. But I promise you, when we put these on the model to our eye against the other colors in the composition, they're going to basically appear as white. We don't need to use actual white, dead white, bad pigment, hard to paint white, to get something that just looks white to our eyes, okay? Um, all of these things are great because they have a little bit of tone in them. So even though they'll still appear white, they're more visually interesting, more compelling, and just generally better to use in your painting. Speaking of painting, let's actually do some of it, huh? How about that? So here we go. Here's a, a figure I'm working on. This is the, the new Tomb King from the Old World. And here I'm gonna use some white blue. So as you saw earlier, you saw it on the desk, it's, it's a blue looking color. But when I put it on this composition, uh, on, on, you know, as part of the, the sort of turquoise, the, the, the clothing he's wearing, it looks white. It looks like a white highlight. That's true on any part of him. And in fact, as I move around on the model and start placing this color, you're gonna see that it looks like this basically white edge highlight. Now, in fact, if we got up super close and put on, uh, you know, little sort of uh, 
glasses that were 10x magnification or something, we could see it has some hue to it, a little bit of color. And it is more visually aligned and interesting, but for the most part, it's occupying the same space. It's that highest value, highest tint part of our paint and our scheme. And so it's doing the job of white while being a much easier and more compelling, credible, and interesting color to work with. Uh, now, let's actually, that's kind of interesting. I did a few dots. Let's do something a little more. So here I'm going to paint the cloak. Now, I actually start this cloak in that bone color. And if you look at it, once the thing is painted on, again, in the bottle it looked pretty gray. But as I'm painting this, and this is this wonderful bone um, from Matt Sexwish's signature line as part of Proacryl. Um, Proacryl makes some really excellent near whites that I really do love. Um, it, you know, if you're interested in checking them out, there is a link uh, down below where you can find uh, and get some, some money off of your Proacryl paints. So, you know, I guess check that out if you're interested. But their uh, whites and near whites are really like the best around. I use them all the time. Now, as I start with this bone color, uh, it, like, yes, it is kind of gray, but at the same time, depending on the rest of our composition, this could have been our highest highlight. Uh, in this case, it's going to be my deepest shadow, right? And that's because I want this cloak to feel like a white cloak. But I, that doesn't mean I paint it white. And in fact, as a point of fact, the only reason I'm going to end up putting any true white on here at all is just to show you a good way to do it at the end. Now, this is a little bit of red infused. It's warm. It's a very warm gray. So next up, I go to this more cold green gray. Again, green gray, that's our white for our white cloak. But watch what happens when I put this on there. Uh, it feels in the composition very much like the bright white highlight. And in fact, because the green is the um, complementary color to red, the little bit of green actually acts as a really nice complement to the red. It's way more visually compelling. I get this cold complementary highlight to my warm red infused shadow. And so all of a sudden I've got a way cooler looking cloak than if I had just gone through gray up to white. So not only did my initial color base coat easier, but because it had a hue involved infused into it, the red, and then I used green as my next layer, a green infused white gray, basically, I got a way more compelling uh, overall composition. So anytime you can lean into these hues, it's just going to look cooler, especially when you can have those slight complementary interplays occurring. The same thing can happen if you use like uh, blues for your shadows and then yellows for your highlights or something like that. Okay. Now, I keep building this up, and from here I am going to go to like another cold but near white. Um, but we're still not there yet. This is still absolutely not white. Like if you look at this in the bottle, this brain eater or whatever, it still looks fairly gray. But in this composition, it looks darn white. Like we're getting up to almost a pure white to our eyes as we perceive it in this composition. And that's what's important. White is really perceived by the colors that are next to it. So something that can be pretty far away from pure white, if it's next to a bunch of other saturated dark colors, will feel like just pure dead white. And that's part of the advantage of working in these near tones. They paint easier, they don't have the annoying pigments, they don't go on chalky, but when used as part of your otherwise normal composition, they will still serve the same function. Now, uh, the uh, last thing I want to show you here or not the last thing, sorry. The next thing I want to show you here is uh, when we put a bunch of these colors together, let's grab Larry out and we're just going to paint his butt. Now I'm going to start with purple. This is pastel violet, to be clear. That is the color. When you look at this, when you looked at it originally, it looked purple to you. But notice when I put it on the little threads, it looks white. Like those look like white threads. Again, they're going to be more visually compelling and interesting, but they look like white threads. And in fact, I'm just going to scatter a bunch of paint all over Larry's butt, just taking you through a bunch of these near whites. And you can see each of them, once they're next to each other, you'll start to see small differences in the hue where you can kind of read when all of these bright near white tones are next to each other, that some of them appear more yellow, some of them appear more uh, blue or more gray or more dark or more light. Like there is travel and distance here. There is something that's happening. You can tell the difference. But 
if any of these were sort of in isolation, none of these things I have put on his butt at all are actual dead white. None of them. Not a one. Okay? But uh, it, it all feels that way because it's next to such a dark surface, namely that gray-black of the rest of his pants. And so in comparison to that, it feels white. Now, if you're going to uh, try to paint something pure white, I do recommend picking up a tube of an artist color, something like a titanium white here that I've got from Golden. These are generally much easier to work with. They're much creamier. Um, these artist grade paints are generally, I, I find, a much more pleasant experience. Again, I rarely use these except to do like the dots and eyes, the glints and gems and so on. But here I'll go ahead and do the edge highlights in this cloak with it. And you can see that, you know, a little bit of water mixed in, we get a nice, pure, strong, effective white. Um, these do work a lot better as far as getting a non-chalky, effective white in there for those occasions where you do want to include um, pure dead white in your composition. Finally, one last little trick uh, I do want to share with you, and that is uh, with the pure white, the other thing you can do here, I have a little goblin friend, and I'm just going to put some, some pure white on his shoulder. Like, let's say I was building the shoulder up to, to a sort of pure white. One of the things you can do with your just pure white part to make it easier to paint with is mix it sort of 50-50 with a little bit of gloss varnish. Because gloss is reflecting and scattering the light in a very controlled uh, way, so it doesn't scatter it all around, it sort of reflects it straight back uh, like a shiny surface will. Um, that means that it's reflecting more or less all of the light, especially a pure white light, back at you. So the gloss is going to make your white seem smoother, more consistent, and more white. So it just makes a little bit of, if you're trying to do something, if you're trying to cover a decent sized area with actual white paint, going 50-50 for that final highlight with the pure white with gloss will not only make it apply more smoothly and evenly, but it will also make it reflect and look more clean and more pure white, and it won't actually look glossy because the white is supposed to be reflecting everything and the gloss is reflecting everything, and so they're both doing the exact same thing, and it will end up just looking like a really bright, intense matte white. So there you go. That's painting the color white and basically everything about it. I do hope this was helpful to you. I know this can be a challenging color. If you like this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions I didn't answer, drop those down in the comments. I always answer every question asked. Uh, as always, if you want to support the channel, hit like, hit subscribe, share this video, but there's a lot of links down below. As I mentioned, there's the monument link um, where you can get some money off of a really excellent set of, uh, of white and near white paints. There's also links down there for Amazon uh, that have all of your hobby goodies and stuff like that. If you pick those up there, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but gives the channel uh, a nice little kickback. And of course, there is our Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. As always though, I thank you so much for watching this one and we'll see you next time.